All right, here's my charging update, and we charged at Cooper's Beach uh, until about 60%. Again, I think we've gone down to 40 and we got back up to 60. Uh, and then now we're in Kawakawa, and we got to Kawakawa with 20% remaining. Um, so we've been making good time, and this journey I've been sort of taking the approach of um, charge a little bit more often and don't charge for as long. As long. But uh, I think this stop here is going to be my last charge of the day before we get to uh, you know near Waipu. And I should be able to get all the way from uh, Kawakawa to Waipu, hopefully. Um, and so far the battery temperature is holding up well. I am one sort of spot away from red, so this charge will probably put me almost at red. And then I could charge again if I need to, but I don't think I'll need to. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at. I'm going to go explore Kawakawa, I'll wait for this charge, and then we'll see you at our next stop. So if you Google Kawakawa, you'll see a claim that it's famous for its toilets. I can't say that I checked those out myself, but based on this footage I found online, maybe I should do that next time. However, what I think is Kawakawa's most unique feature is the railway line running down its main road. The only town in New Zealand that still has this feature, something that was a lot more common in the early 1900s. The railway here was developed to carry coal from the mines to the harbour in 1868, near where we got off that ferry from Russell. The railway was eventually extended to join up with Whangarei in 1925, but it was disestablished in 1985 and leased to the Bay of Islands Vintage Railway, who remain the operators of this line to this day. Currently trains only run as far as Te Aki Aki, a short 4.5km stretch. However, there are plans to restore the route to Opua, and the Heritage Group here are fundraising to restore a bridging tunnel on the route to railway standards. If you'd like to watch the full trip on this railway, please check out the video linked below by Ricky. You can ride this train during the school holidays or on Friday, Saturday, Sunday for a ticket cost of only $30. The railway line also joins up with the Twin Coast Cycle Trail. The cycleway crosses the entire width of the Northland Peninsula, joining Opua and Horeki with 87 kilometers of cycle trail across stunning landscapes. Tonight we're staying at the Ruakaka Beach Holiday Park, which is 83 kilometers from Kawaka, and I got here with 24% remaining. I've actually been chatting with these guys for a while now, just talking about the EV charger, making sure it was working and available for EV owners to come and check out. My method for deciding where to stay on this trip is to first check out PlugShare for places that are about four to five chargers away, and then find something that had EV charging advertised and that had some feedback about it. This place didn't have any comments, so that's why I've been sort of touching base with them and talking to them about it in advance of wanting to stay. Uh, and then when you book, make sure you do book and tell them that you want to be able to use the charger. That means that it's not going to get booked out to someone else or that you might not run into it not being available for the time that you want to use it. Uh, next morning uh, we left uh, Rokaka with a full charge and a cool battery temperature. That's the most important thing with Nissan Leaf. Um, we also paid full price, so I can say this is an unbiased opinion. This is a really nice and peaceful campground to stay at. Uh, good facilities, great views, and most importantly, fantastic EV charging services. Um, so a restful night, um, and now we're off to our next stop, Waipu Caves.